Where does Satan dwell, I mean where does Santana put his feet up, meaning where does he call home, and is that place one of permanency? Revelation chapter 2 and verse 13. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. Woe horse, even where Satan's seat is, and where Satan dwelleth, folks that is what I am swayed by inspiration to speak to today, as God knows at all times where Satan's throne is, and as we know, its location is ever-changing, meaning one day it could be in earth, i.e., in the district called Columbia, or maybe Palestine's capital Jerusalem, or even Vatican City, and the next day it could be found in high places, as told to us in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, with one of those high places being heaven itself, for as we know, he is found there accusing us day and night, so says the book. Hi folks, I hope this video is finding you well, with joy-filled happiness and good health accompanying your cadence, as there is enough grief and pain going around, given life's present-day dictums, edicts, and ever-changing jurisprudence, is there not? My friends have you ever thought about where Satan's throne is, I mean why would it be mentioned in Ta Biblia, if we were not to give it more than a passing thought or cognitive glance? Let's talk about Satan's Chesterfield with Ottoman attending, yea his Davenport of state, being his basilica richly ornamented with sculpture and gilding, yea his thronage, and first off, what do we know about he that occupies that seat, yea the archfiend himself, whom is known by many names in this palatinate. In some circles he is referred to as Leviathan, or Beelzebub, while in other coterie, he is known as Matanbuchus, Mephistopheles, and Dibuk, or Dibuk, but mostly he is called Satan, or the devil, and we know through study that he is not the only devil in earth, as there are many devils in this earthen realm whom also sit atop thrones. Folks please know that Satan was not created as the enemy of God but became the accuser, for as we know, Satan was made perfect, just as we were, and he came from the same place the children of the Most High came from, and that divine matrix was from within our Father himself, then at the time of our Father's choosing, we as God's children were formed in the belly, then given birth, and now we serve our Father in various capacities each, However Satan's birth is not spoken to directly in the Bible. My so beloved familiars here, recently I was asked why God made Satan, which prompted this message, so let's visit how Satan was made, perfect, found in Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 15. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. Yes my friends, as with all things that were created by God, Satan was created perfect, and as we know, Satan answered to God back in the day, told to us in Job chapter 1 and verse 7. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord, and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Folks if Satan was not bound obedient to God then he wouldn't have given our father the time of day, and certainly Satan would not have answered him, but would have ignored him, feeling as if he didn't owe our father the time of day. You see folks, it is stated from certain pulpits and lecterns, that Satan wanted to be God, well he didn't, however, the Bible tells us that Satan wanted to be like God, which means he wanted to be worshipped, and basically Satan was not satisfied with his appointment and apportioned lot, and wanted more than to be God's favorite angel and one of many morning stars, instead, the unruly Santana wanted to be like God himself. Isaiah chapter 14 and verses 13 and 14. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation, in the sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. My friends we know that Satan did not achieve that height, station, or estate, but instead Satan became the god of this world, and with every sin perpetrated in earth, 
Satan gets the praise that he longs for, and he showed his dominion to Jesus, while atop Mount Temptation, found in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 8. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and sheweth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them. Folks in the next verse, Satan went so far as to offer Jesus all that he had control of in the earth, i.e., being all the kingdoms, which we read about in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 9. And saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Side note, are we not instructed to have no other gods before us, and certainly we are not to bend knee to any of those fake deities, and is the reason why Jesus refused to do so when tempted by the devil. You see folks, the world worships Satan indeed, however Matanbukas was not satisfied with the throne that he was given, remember in the aforementioned verse Satan said, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, and that was the throne in earth that he sat atop, but due to his greed, he wanted the praise of Jesus the mighty Christ did as well, and though Satan has ruled here since God rejected his illusions of pomp and circumstance, splendor and greatness, he wanted more which he tried to obtain through lies, and the two biggest lies that Satan tells the lost, in this world, with the first one being that there is no God, and the second lie that he tells unbelievers is that there is no Satan, and as we know my brothers and sisters, Jesus cannot be lied to by anyone, neither Satan nor any other person, demon, or entity. Luke chapter 4 and verse 6. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Did you catch that folks, well for those of you always waiting up the trail for me to catch up, I know that you caught it, in that verse Satan told Jesus that he was given the world, again, for that is delivered unto me, yes my so beloved adjacents here, Satan has dominion over the majority of earth's inhabitants, and what else did Satan say to Jesus, while revealing the same to us by proxy? That's right, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. My friend Satan shares in portion that which he was given, yea that which was given to him, he shares it with kings, chieftains, and princes of the world, and aren't you glad that we are not of the world? This is what Jesus said concerning our not being of the world, in John chapter 17 and verse 16. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Folks do you realize that if we were of the world, then Satan would have dominion over us, and he would rule us as he does the lost of this world, but by destiny's counsel and divine sway, that is simply not the case, yea not only by certain promise are we made separate and beyond Satan's reach, but by our father's grip we are salvaged from the dung heap that is the world of the lost, the same which cling to Satan's promise, as we cleave to the promise made to us by our God Almighty. Romans chapter 11 and verses 26 and 27. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, There shall come out of Zion the Deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob, for this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. Yea Jesus is that Deliverer from Zion and we are Jacob, or a tad closer to home, we are Israel, and the blood of Jesus has enabled that covenant. My friends Satan does not rule over the children of God, for as we know, we are our Father's option, His glory, and His grace, and we can thank our Father God Almighty for that, as well we can thank Jesus the mighty Christ did for loving us to certain freedom see, my so beloved we were by blood washed clean and redeemed from Satan's lure and power, yes folks, it was the love of God and the blood of Jesus that saved us from Satan's lure, snag and snarl. My brothers and sisters here, Satan tries to tempt us away from our father's comfort, offering us worldly stations and estates, and we decline those advances, so he becomes the accuser as he accuses us day and night, and does things that God just cannot do, with one thing being, Satan can look upon evil and associate with the same, whereas our father cannot, told to us here in part, in Habakkuk chapter 1 and verse 13. Thou art of purer eyes than to behold evil, and canst not look on iniquity. Do you realize folks that means we cannot be evil, for if we were ignoble, immoral, or of a lesser standard than what is acceptable, in God's eyes, 
then our Father God Almighty would not and could not have any dealings with us, or in other words, because God cannot look upon evil, there would be no interaction, proceedings, or exchange between us and our pater familiar, and that is called reading between the lines, which is another gift of our Father. So what else can God not engage in, which Satan is not restricted from doing? My friends God cannot lie, neither can our Father bear false witness against that which is so. Titus chapter 1 and verse 2. In hope of eternal life, which God, that cannot lie, promised before the world began, and folks rest assured that promise of eternal life was made to you and I before the world began, with us being the prophesied end day obedient generation, and as to shore up his promise, God went so far as to write our names in the Lamb's book of life. In addition, please know that being our Father's fruit, progeny, and seed, we shall never die, and though dead in Christ by way of spiritual crucifixion, we live this day, and will in fact live forever, yea we are our Father's end-day prophets, saints and messengers, as well we are his end-day confessors, witnesses, and believers, and this day please know that we are pardoned and washed clean of our sins, as we remain witnesses to the glory, devotion, and love of our pater familiar, the same being. Our Father God Almighty. As we head for the door, we are protected from Satan's advances for we are not the lost, but we are the found, we are not the pregnable, but we are in fact the saved, no matter where Satan dwells, and as long as we abide within our Father's accord, we shall continue to be sheltered, safeguarded and preserved, and on that note, be well, stay strong, and I thank you so much for listening my friends.